much. And I do have to say the little rumbling that you just did, that's getting us up, blasting into space. Have you ever seen a NASA rocket launch? It's usually doing that just what you did. And so I'll take you on a journey to some of those thousands new worlds that we imagine, but that we actually found already out there in the sky. You go out at night, you see a couple of thousand stars if you have a look at the night sky, but that's only a fraction of the billions of stars we actually have in our galaxy alone. And so this is a picture of our galaxy. Billions of stars in our galaxy alone, and out there we have billions of galaxies. So there's an incredible number of stars out there, and with the last NASA and ESA missions, what we found is that around every fifth of those stars out there, there is actually a planet that's small enough, so it could be a rock, and that's just at the right distance that it's not too hot or too cold, so that there could be liquid water, what we think, you'd also need for life out there. So there are thousands to billions of planets out there. And how do we find them? What you saw before is the huge Milky Way. And what I wanted to show you there is that actually we're only probing a tiny, tiny bit of our solar neighborhood, and we found thousands of planets already. And this is to show you how we find them, because they are tiny. You take the Earth, put them next to each other, 100 Earth is the size of our own sun. So it's tiny. If you look up at night, you see the spot of light, the star, but you won't see the planet. We need huge telescopes to do that, and that's the next generation of telescopes. But for now, have a look at the animation there. If the planet goes around the star, the star actually wobbles. So basically, the planet moves around the star, and the star leans back because the gravitation of the planet tucks at the star. And so the, the star moves back and forth, and you can see that in the stellar light, pretty much similar to when an ambulance comes and goes away from you, the sound changes, the Doppler effect. You can do that for light as well. And so the star moves towards you, away from you, and this is how you figure out that a planet goes around it. And what you also see, if by chance we look at it the right way, the planet goes between us and its star, it blocks part of this really hot stellar surface. So the star periodically gets dimmer. And this is how you can figure out how big the planet is that goes in front of that star. And so it's much easier to find the big star planets out there. But if you make a graph, and this is what, I see, what you see here, on the bottom is the radius of the planet, how big it is. And here on the right is how many we found out there. And don't worry about the numbers, but you see Jupiter sitting at around 10 Earth radii here, and the Earth sitting around 1. And what you see is that there are so many more of these small planets out there. And when the planet goes in front of the star, as you see here, the stellar light gets dimmer, but part of the stellar light gets filtered through the atmosphere of the planet, and that allows us to read the atmosphere, figure out what's in the air of that planet over light years away. So we can do, if you want, a kind of weather forecast for planets around other suns. What is pretty exciting, because we can't really get there yet, and I'm counting on all of you guys to figure something out, how we can do space travel a little bit better, and also to help me have a look at these planets and discover, explore these other worlds, because we have thousands of them. So I hope a couple of you are actually going to do this for a living. Well, this is really what you get, right? You get a tiny, tiny spot of light in space, because these planets are so far away. If we shrink our whole solar system to the size of an Oreo cookie, the next star is two football fields away. And that's the next star, and we're talking about billions of stars. So basically, you get a, di di a tiny speckle of light up there, and what do you do? you hopefully did in school already, you basically use a uh, prism to 
cut it up in its own colors. The white light of the planet gets cut up in its colors, and then you can actually read the intensity in each of these colors. And that tells you what kind of air is on that planet. It makes a spectral fingerprint. And here you see the one for the Earth that has oxygen, water, and uh, also reducing gas methane. That is the spectral fingerprint for life. And of course, the Earth was different through its geological time. And here's just a couple of things when life started and how new we are. But that gets reflected in the spectral fingerprint. What kind of life you have on this planet? Maybe even intelligent life, and what kind of environment, air, is up there. And so we learn about our own planet by doing that. We learn about other Earth. And basically, this is how the spectra changes. And really, one of the things we want to do to learn about past, present, and future of the Earth, and hopefully find signature of other life on this planet. And so I hope you guys, a couple of you guys, are going to help us out in the future on this. Thank you so much.